Welcome back to the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I'm coming at you with an 8,000 subscriber special. I want to say thank you to all the viewers, and that's what this video is all about. Thanks for all the support. Thank you for your support. Now, getting into this, we will have a 9,000 subscriber special coming, and the 8,000 came quick, so 9 probably will come just as fast. I will have a link down below where you can submit your pictures and your collection for the 9,000 subscriber special. I also want to do something special coming up in about two weeks. I want to look at vintage stuff. So if you have vintage collection, a shelf of vintage, it may be just one shelf, maybe it's a whole room. I want to do a video of just vintage. We're talking about older than like 95, so old 80s, hopefully 70s, 60s, 50s, whatever. Be a lot of fun. And the whole goal in that video is going to be all about I had that and I forgot that existed. But anyway, let's get right into these great collections. And again, thanks for your support. First off, I want to say with these collection videos, it's really good to get some help, maybe get some ideas on how you can display your collection. Maybe it could get you motivated to display your collection or maybe to display it better or to make some changes. So it's kind of fun, so let's get right into this. So we're going to start off by looking at Alvaro's collection here. This is some mainline stuff and it's a mixture of different eras from Siege to it looks like a Prime figure in there. And we have some Earthrise and Titans Returns. And if you look at the top shelf, you can see some Dinobots in there and in the front of the Dinobots, you have the Legends class. Now I think that Hasbro did a really good job with the Legends figures at the time and what they put out and for the $10 price point. And to today, they're still using that exact same mold in the Pit of Judgment for the Sharktacon. So it's really cool, but having the smaller ones in the front and then they get bigger as they go back so you can see all the figures. The shelf down below is a Decepticon shelf and you see some Starscream and Thundercracker in there mixed in. And so if you kind of want to get an idea what does Siege and Earthrise look like next to some of the older iterations, you can see that right here and I think it displays well. Next up we can see the top of the shelf here. We've, of course we got the bigger ones like Trypticon and Predaking and, and then we have the Abominus. Now I really wish they would have made combiners all the same size as the, the Predaking and the Devastator but that's not what happened and at the end of the day we just have to deal with it and display them the way we want to display them. But again Predaking is always the biggest in everyone's mind so that works out. Now Going down a little bit lower to that lower shelf, you do see in the back we have a blaster. Now back in the day, blaster and a lot of other figures were made leader class. Leader class meant much, much bigger figures than the rest of them. And it does kind of harken back to G1 with that. But also you can see in here uh, a lot of stuff in the front. We've got, again, a blend of different figures from different eras and it all looks good. I like the way that looks. So here we are with more of uh, some movie, so the Bayverse kind of stuff mixed in here. And I, I don't really know the different eras of them or like how, what movie they're from and all of that, but they are lined up the way I like it. Bigger in the back, smaller in the front, and it works out. I do think some of this is studio series in here, and then some of it might be a little bit older. But as your progression of your collection goes, you keep adding to it and finding new ways to display them. Now looking at this one here, at the top you see the Prime that's that connected to Jetfire and I think from one of the Bay movies. Uh, I've got that. I think that was really cool how they did that. That is that is awesome how you can wear the armor. And then next to him is, a, is another Prime where his trailer turns into some sort of an armor. But the big bots on top and then working your way down. I think that's a, on the right, it's like a Power of the Prime. I, I like that gimmick that they had with that. Power of the Prime Optimus Prime 2. Getting down lower, we do have uh, some more of the Bay movie bots in there. And I think this is displayed really well and it looks good. And here's the full shot of the whole shelf and everything going on. Thank you very much for submitting your pictures. Great looking collection. I like the way you got it displayed. Next, we're moving to Carlos's collection. And this is really cool here. So we got some Robotech and then we have, I don't know exactly what these statues are. I think they're statues of some anime and it just works it fits it's kind of like you look at this and you could see the show the Robotech show going on right there it makes a lot of sense and and it's very elegant too it's not all cluttered up there's just three or four elements per shelf and it really works well here's another one of those shelves done pretty much the same way 
that just looks awesome. And, and I like the way that looks. Another thing is these Robotech figures, uh, you do want to give them their presence and their space because they cost a pretty penny. Here we have a whole shelf dedicated mostly to Voltron, but we've got the, uh, the Sola Chigokin Lion Bot and then the Sola Chigokin Dairugger in there. Those look great. I, I just really love what Bandai did with those. And then we've got Robotech up top. Now, I, I again, I don't know all of the names and all the details of the Robotech. I love Jetfire, though, so I've told him I'm a Robotech fan just by association, but looks good. Now, here we are with a mix of a little bit of G1 and a little bit of Modern and, and, and everything else in between. And see, I feel like you can do that. You can mix it and make it look good. And at the top... We have the Fort Max, and this is a R.I.D. Fort Max, and I think Grand Maximus or something like that. Uh, that's a cool one to have, too. And then we have some Siege items with the Siege Jetfire, Earthrise Prime, and a Siege Ultra Magnus. And then going down, we have, I think it's the Cybertron, Optimus Prime and uh, Ultra Magnus. Is that, is that the series it's from, or is it an R.I.D. series where they combine, I believe, those, that's what those are. And then... They're in their truck mode, so you're mixing alt mode, you're mixing different generations, and I think it looks really good the way it's displayed. Then going down, of course, Predaking. Looking good with that big old sword of his, uh, that's outstanding. And then, see, mixing the alt mode, I like to display my reflector in alt mode too. So I've got reflector in the camera mode also on my shelf, that looks cool. So getting into Carlos's Masterpiece Collection, you look up top and you can see how it's filling out with Minasaur needing his other arm and he's going to be getting that soon, I'm sure, hopefully by the end of the year. And then we've got Omega Supreme next to the, the Zeta version of Bruticus and then a bunch of Dinobots. And so I think that looks really nice. You know, it's kind of one of those things like how do you display the Dinobots as a team? And especially if you're using these kind of shelves, these DTOFs, or if this is a DTOF, uh, and putting them on the top makes a lot of sense because you want to spread them out. You want to be able to see the whole team at once. I like that. And then, of course, going down, we see Autobots on the top in the top three shelves. And like the top half's Autobots and the bottom half, it's Decepticons. Definitely a nice looking setup there. Looks really good. Uh, spaced out. I do like having things spaced out and giving it enough space to see everything just right. Also, there's some elevation. I see some stands that are in there, so some of the smaller bots that are in the back have a stand so you can see them too. So there's a lot of work put in and thought put into how to display those very well. So this shelf here at the top, we have some Titan class figures and that Scorponok, that looks good. Uh, that's They've done some good work with the Scorponok and Trypticon. Then moving down, we've got Zeta, Superion, and then Toy World. And then moving down, it's funny because Star Saber is such a big figure, right? But he doesn't look very big compared to these behemoths in here. So that's always kind of funny because when he came out, I was like, well, that's a big figure. And then it uh, looks like we've got the KFC. Is that the KFC next to it? And uh, I think the KFC one combines with it. But anyway, uh, and then going down, that looks to be like some alternators on that lower shelf. And here we go with G1. Again, I do want to do a video of vintage collection. Anything you have in your collection that's vintage. So the more off the wall, the better. And the, the more obscure, the better. It'd be a lot of fun. Trip down memory lane there. But here we go with some G1 Transformers. And I do like the look of G1 Transformers when they're in their bot mode. And it also looks like there's a couple of other things mixed in with this G1 collection. But there are always tugs on my heartstrings to see... G1 in there. I do like how the Metroplex is in a base mode and integrated a bunch of figures with it and the minifigures. Uh, that looks good too. Carlos, thanks for submitting your pictures. Great collection and lots of work you put into displaying it. So looking at David's collection here, this is a nice clean looking setup. Very well spaced out. I do like how on the left you see that it's the Decepticons and then you move over to the right with the Autobots. Obviously, there's more Autobots in here than Decepticons. And at the bottom, you see Future Space. Taking a bit of a closer look at these Decepticons at the top, you have the leaders of them. You've got 
the Megatron, the Shockwave, the Soundwave. I mean, Starscream's a leader too, but he's mixed in at the lower shelf. And that does look great. Look at the lighting that's in there. I love it. And then the glass shelves. I do admit, I don't personally use glass shelves, but it does add an era of elegance to your collection, and it really does look nice. Moving down sort of to the middle with the Galvatron and Cyclonus and uh, Six Shot and all that looks, looks really good in there. Looks like they're supposing to make some action going on. And then below that, we've got a team. We have the team of Minasaur just waiting to get built. So here is the center part with some of the Autobots and got Dinobots up top. Now, again, when you display Dinobots, do you want to have them in bot mode? Do you want to have them in alt mode? And that's kind of a 50-50 toss up. I have mine in bot mode like this. And so uh, I like that. But on the other hand, we see them in dino mode most in the cartoon. So that's a tough toss up. Anyway, they look really good the way they're in there. I do like that. Moving down to the next lower shelf, integrating a lot of smaller figures with it. So you do see everything very well. And if you look back, their tracks is standing on some sort of a something so that you can still see him. And so is Warpath. So that really works out well. Down at the lowest shelf there, we do have Phoenix, Skyfire, Jetfire looking good, pretty much dominating that shelf. And getting into this one, we've got Optimus Prime at the top, pretty much the art crew going on right here. And that looks good. And the way they're spaced out and posed, looking great. Moving down to the next lower level, we do have more of the uh, earlier edition Autobots. And and that does look good. And I like how there's a blend of different companies. If you look at this, this isn't all Takara. It's not all, well, you really can't do all Takara, by the way. But it's a blend of different companies and, and different styles that all blend well and look good. And then we have the next shelf down, a 1986 movie. And here's the thing with this. There are now so many options. You can do multiple options for each of these characters for the most part. And so you could have a different looking display. Also, at the very bottom, you see boxes, and, and I keep my boxes too. David, great collection. Thank you for submitting your pictures. I love the way you got it set up. I love the lighting. Good job. So looking at Marcus's collection here, looking at the spacing of the figures on the shelf, there's very little of figures in front of other figures. So giving them all of that free space makes it look really good. Anyway, looking at the top, we do have those Seekers looking good. And then down below that, the, the Shelf of Leaders. I love that. The Shelf of Decepticon Leaders. And then below all that are the Autobots. And it does look great. And every single one of these characters has some sort of action pose to them, for the most part. Don't forget about the little uh, G1 shelves over there. Very small shelves that are on the wall. And that looks really good, too. Marcus, I look forward to seeing your collection and as it grows, as it expands, and as you put more things in it in your collection and your display and see how it evolves over time. So getting into Matt's collection here, and one thing I do want to point out is that Computron is definitely underrepresented in the Masterpiece line. So uh, definitely the Combiner Wars one that they made, or I don't even think was even Combiner Wars at the time that it came out? I mean, Combiner Wars was revving down. But anyway, it's pretty cool looking in here with these uh, Fembots. Here are Dinobots. Now, the Dinobots in Dino mode, and they're all together as a team, and they're on their own shelf or table. Uh, those are huge. Uh, I believe this is the Gigapower. So, because they are, they are massive, and it does kind of look like Gigapower to me. But uh, I, I, I can't spot them like... In the dino mode, it's easier to, to, to know in bot mode. But anyway, I still think it looks great. And here's a more full shot of the whole collection and all the shelves and how it goes. Now, there's multiple different levels and different angles. And depending on how much space there is, spaced out to the height of each figure. And we've meshed a lot of different uh, figures together, whether it be different generations of modern, and there's a little bit of masterpiece mixed in. I think it looks really good the way it's done. From this angle, we can see that we do have Minasaur in a masterpiece. Now, this Minasaur would tower, pretty much tower over 
what's going on with these other combiners. But the fact that the Minasaur is on a different shelf, it doesn't really stand out that he's that much taller than the rest of those combiners. So that's one way to cheat it. See, I cheated in my display too, but this is a much different, and I think this is a better way to make all of them look like they're about the same size and they work together, even though Minasaur is a good two inches taller. As for the rest of this, it does look really good, well spaced out. I think that like Astro Train next to the Devastator, the Combiner Wars Devastator looks really good. I, I do like the Seekers. This new Seeker mold is working out really well. I like that. And then down below on the lower shelf, uh, we get to see some more of G1-esque type of modern uh, with the Earthrise in there and some Siege looking really good. And here is Matt's uh, Titan class figures and pretty much all the best Titans right here all at once and it does look good. You can kind of see the progression of how they got smaller over the years. It started out with the largest Transformer ever with Metroplex and they got a little bit smaller but I have to admit they all look great. Matt, thanks for the pictures. I really like how it's set up. It looks really good. Now we're getting to Matthew's collection. We're going to start with we got a Lego Millennium Falcon and a Lego Speeder here. So that's pretty cool. I, I wonder how long it took to put that stuff together. Now here is a vintage retro picture. Of course, vintage stuff. Uh, submit vintage pictures. I'll have a link up. I want to see vintage pictures for a vintage video we'll do in about two weeks. But anyway, looking at this, I see a lot of mask in there. I see some Centurion. I see Box Centurion. And I see a bunch of other cool stuff in there. Of course, we have some vintage Transformers. Why wouldn't we? It looks great. Uh, and it's all enclosed and being kept safe from dust. Now, I absolutely love this mask picture. First off, you've got the boxes behind the actual figure and vehicle, and then the figure and vehicle in front of it, and it's in its action mode or its battle mode. Looks really good. I love it. You could see pretty much everything you want to see about the box, and you could see the figure and vehicle looks great just really brings me back i love the way this is displayed and i love the way it's spaced out here we have a mixture of all different kinds of eras of transformers in the packaging in the boxes and there's just something about the original box art that gets me i love it i know encore stuff kind of got away from that box art for a while but kind of started bringing it back but it does look really good and here we go with a mixture of some Masterpiece, and we have some G1, and at the bottom we got a lot of G1, and I do like that too. And something about seeing the G1 figures, we're going to see more G1 coming up too, but seeing G1 figures, it just, it makes me feel good. I like seeing them. As much as I don't get G1s out as often, probably should do it more, getting to see it every day on the shelf is a good feeling. And loving this Centurions, we got the boxes. So we got an Ace shelf, we've got a Jake shelf, we got a Max shelf, looking really good. I like that. And then we've got a lot of the Legos that are put together. And the funny thing about Legos is that the Legos do so much more than actual mainline Hasbro stuff does. It's, it's crazy. They're way smaller and you build them yourself and yet they have more features than mainline. Anyway. And then at the very bottom there, it looks like we've got some uh, Transformers, some of the more of the modern ones. Actually, I'm a little bit at a loss. I don't know exactly what those are, but they look really cool. Matthew, thanks for showing me your collection. I absolutely love all that vintage goodness in there mixed with some of the modern. Next, we have Michael's collection. We're going to start with this uh, Legends stuff going on in here. And I have to admit, I got into Legends late. And the Dinobots that were made by uh, the DX9 and then upscaled by McFans Toys, the first run of those that have that real shine to them, those are the ones I think look the best. It's not the ones that DX9 actually made. It's the McFans Toys, which I think that's what these are. That looks great, I have to admit. That looks really good. So anyway, uh, this shelf does look nice. And with the Legends... It's one of those things that the Legend stuff is almost on par with Masterpiece, and it displays very well. We got a shelf of Earthrise and some Siege going on here with Megatron and Prime and a bunch of other good stuff going on. Looks like a whole lot of fun right there. So we've got some Masterpieces in here, and 
First off, I do want to talk about these bumblebees now. We have the MP21, we have the uh, KBB that made the KO upscaled one, which I like. It's got die cast in the middle, it's heavy, the bigger one in the back. And then we've got this uh, gold bug. Uh, I'm not sure what who made that one. The other one that's the it's the bumble jumper, cliff jumper one. Not really sure, but anyway, it still looks pretty good. Is that an MMC? No, X Transbots maybe. Anyway, I do like this, and it's kind of fun when you do kind of a focus on a shelf, which that's really cool. Anyway, I love Soundwave. Soundwave is awesome, and the sets just always a whole lot of fun. Michael, thanks for putting your pictures in here, and I, I think it looks great, and I like to see as things progress. Getting into Richard's collection, we're going to start with this smaller shelf in here. And we've got a, a bunch of G1 in here looking pretty good. It's kind of interesting and elegant the way it's set up. And I like that. You do want to kind of say, hey, where did it all start? Where did it all begin? And of course, it began with G1. Now, getting into this shelf here, we have some third-party masterpiece up top. We have some headmasters, and I think that looks really good. And of course, the contact shot, I mean... That thing is uh, the elusive contact shop, looking really good. And then going down lower, we do have more Headmasters working its way in there, looking great. Uh, I do like the Monster Bots in there, the Lupus doing his thing, uh, showing his articulation. Yes, he has some articulation. All these are posed really well. And then down below that, we have the planet of Junkion, and of course, they're doing their thing too. That looks really good, and it's always fun to have the, the Junkions riding themselves. That looks really cool. Of course, that's the whole gimmick. They transform into a fully rideable motorcycle, so definitely want to display it like that. All right, and so Richard's got his combiners in here and larger bots in here, larger than life bots, and that does look good. And I don't know which version of this Toy World uh, constructor that had the shiny barrel, but that shiny barrel stands out it looks cool i like that and and of course that's the bruticon the bruticon with the more upgraded tune colors yeah I, I i'm jealous mine's the first one that doesn't have the more updated tune colors but anyway i i still like that i think that looks good and of course the superior and we're getting into some good old-fashioned masterpiece in here starting of course at the top with the decepticons and this whole shelf is decepticons the leaders up there, uh, we've got Starscream, Megatron, and of course Shockwave all working in there. Mixed in with a couple of the Seekers, looking at the Make Toys, and I gotta say, Make Toys still looks good, still displays very well. And then smaller bots in the front, and of course we've got good old Reflector and the cassettes in there with the MMC, larger cassettes. See, it's amazing, like we're doing this round of videos, Thomas wasn't around back then, a handful of these combiners. Uh, the combiners are more filled out in these pictures, but yeah, Thomas looks good, definitely adds to the look there. And then looking into Toy World Conehead, and, and of course, not quite being able to build your Minasaur just yet, so having them in bot mode on the shelf is the best way to display that team. And then down below, we have some of the the movie bots that look great. That, that looks nice down there. And uh, I do love the Quietus. I do love how all that intermingles and works well together. And I think that's the KFC version. Yeah, of Octane. All right, here's more of Richard's pictures here. Of course, got the Dinobots up top. And then moving on down, we've got a nice mixture of some Autobots and our crew mixed in there. And where are you... The smaller ones that are in the back are standing on something looks like a prime trailer, which I think that's what it is, so that we can see them still and still work it in there. And then going down to the next lower shelf, we do see a, a bunch of the mini bots in the front and the bigger bots in the back. That looks really good. I like the way we've integrated some of the extra accessories into the display in the shelf also. It's kind of like, what do you do with all these accessories? So getting them in your display, in your shelf, that's kind of fun too. And then at the very bottom, you know, Magnus, you have to have a big shelf, a, a tall shelf to accommodate Magnus. And that kind of created a lot of empty space, but I think the empty space adds to that shelf and the look of it. And part of that space is the fact that there's just not all of those characters made yet for that 
but it looks really good. Richard, thank you for submitting your pictures. Looks really nice. Now we're moving into Surreal's collection. And starting out with G1. Again, I want to say vintage, senior vintage pictures, whatever toy line vintage you have, I want to see it for a video coming up in a couple of weeks. But looking at this, starting at the top, got the bigger figures all the way across the top there. That definitely looks good. And to the left with the Fort Max, I mean, you can't deny Fort Max has a presence. He's huge. And then working the way down, there are some combiners in there. And these combiners look great when they're all put together and they're standing on the shelf. Now, I remember as a kid, I was, I was like, there's, they just didn't have any articulation. Once you built it, it was like a statue, more or less, with moving arms. But as an adult displaying these, they look amazing. And then going down the next level, we have more, just more and more and more beautiful G1 goodness. I love the way it looks. I just love seeing G1. So here we go with the Beast Wars shelf. And this almost looks like, like almost a store setup because you have a hanging peg and you have the actual... Um, packaged items and hung there looking cool see this is fun like you walk into your collection room and it feels like you're walking into a store that's a lot of fun there's no need to go to Walmart I can just go into my collection room and it's way more fun than going to Walmart trust me that looks good now if I'm right there's some beast machines mixed in here on the top shelf and then more Beast Wars in this and again I'm not so deep into the Beast Wars but I do like the way this is set up and I don't see a lot of Beast Wars collections. So this is kind of a good reference point for me. Like how would you display your Beast Wars? I, I have one shelf of Beast Wars set up and I was, it took me a long time to kind of figure out how do I want to display it? But I think this is nice. You've got the empty space. You can see pretty much every character works for me. Here is a bigger shot of what's going on on this wall here. And I do want to say having the boxes at the top is also really cool I, I like seeing stuff in the box I like seeing the boxes so that is always cool for me too and then looking sort of in the middle we have more combiners in the middle of some of the actual combiner wars some modern stuff so blending in some modern along with all of the, the vintage stuff that was on the other wall just looks really great um, on the left here I think we're seeing some generation some more of the classics line and you see kind of a progression over towards the right as time goes on does look really good do want to show right here uh, at the top i think this is prime is this transformers prime i believe that's prime or not it's animated i'm sorry the transformers animated shelf and then below that animated shelf we have some of the combiner wars stuff and i i think that six shot they made was really good just one of the better figures that Hasbro has put out. I, I don't think a lot of people really even paid attention to that release, but it's a really cool figure. I got an extra one for my son and he loves it. So anyway, uh, looking at that, I do like this whole Combiner War setup here and seeing what's going on. So getting into this, uh, I want to say with the Masterpiece shelves, we've got Skylinks in here. Skylinks just looking really good. Uh, that's the MMC version. That is awesome. I do like it. I I kind of regret not picking that one up at first. I really thought we'd have seen more Masterpiece Skylinks figures coming out by now, but that one was the best so far that I've seen. Uh, looking at the top, we do have some mini bots and some car bots spaced out really well in that elegant glass. I do like the way the glass looks. And then, of course, Skylinks is being shared with some of the, uh, of the Bayverse figures, which I don't know 100% which ones they are, but they do look cool. Here we go on another shelf, move it over. Uh, directly in the center, we do have like the KFC Blaster. We have the Aerial Bots from Zeta. I do have to say, Zeta did a good job with their Silver Bolt. That Silver Bolt looks pretty much spot on and uh, rivals the Fans Toys one, actually. And then look over to the left there, we do see... That unique toys version of Sunstorm, that's a pretty cool figure too. And we have a couple of different versions of Hot Rod and Rodimus in there. Now looking at this, this is an interesting way to do it too, is to kind of have a shelf sort of in the middle. 
Now I'm thinking this is in the middle of the room, and so we have shelves lining the the walls, and then in the middle there's this shelf, which kind of gives you a 3D look and a 3D aspect of it, which again I think is really cool. And having sort of a shelf like this, you can have a display going, and you'd really want to be able to see what's going on from all different angles, and I like that. Thanks for submitting your pictures. You have a great looking collection. Just a, a big space, just full of Transformers. That is awesome, a lot of fun. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about these collections. Let me know if you've got a collection that you want in these videos, then submit them to the Titerium Hangar Toys. I'll have links down below for the 9K sub video, and I'll also have a link for the Vintage Figures Collection video. Like, subscribe, Titerium Hangar out.